An alternative social media network is shooting up the charts in the wake of the presidential election. No doubt, maybe you've noticed at least some people talking about something called Parler. Brooke Katz in the Fort Worth studio tonight to give us all a little closer look at this platform. Brooke? And Doug, I just checked a few minutes ago. It is number one top free app in Apple's App Store as well as Android's. The social media company says it's rooted in freedom of expression and it's gaining popularity among conservative circles. Its guidelines aren't to be a conservative platform, but I just think a lot of conservative people have, have kind of um, moved that direction. Dallas Durham is one of a growing number of people flocking to Parler. On its homepage, Parler calls itself a place where you can express yourself openly without fear of being deplatformed for your views. We don't get censored as human beings, you know, uh, in life. And we all have those friends that kind of maybe a little off their rocker here and there and say things, but, but we as adults, you know, we absorb that and we take out of that what we need. Yeah, I think the important distinction is that censorship is a government act. We spoke with Mark Tremaine, an associate professor in the Department of Communication at UT Arlington. On Facebook, several events popping up over the last few days with tens of thousands of participants encouraging a mass exit over claims of censorship. A private company can do what they want, you know. So if you want to, to use a service that's being offered by a private company and they put limits on what you can do on that platform, you can't cry, uh, oh, my free speech has been, I mean, you can, you can try to cry that, but it, they're not the government. Tremaine says strategies by the big social media players to tackle misinformation show they're concerned about being held responsible. While Durham still hasn't decided how he feels about Parler, he says he likes the idea. We can choose as individuals who we uh, want to have around us and what we want to listen to when we're having those conversations with our friends. So why should we uh, um, be restricted from doing that on a social media platform as well? Now, of course, not everyone is a fan. Critics point to posts containing far right-wing content and conspiracy theories. Doug?